After the successful participation in the Tree Nautic Tournament on Gauss Island, Captain Bay's crew spent some time stowing the goods and wares they had won for the next journey to come. While Captain Bass is inspecting her crew, Pascal is arranging the common shelf in the accommodation room with valuable bottles and jars. Good morning, Pascal. What a lovely set of shimmering precious jars and bottles. I am so happy that we got at least a single piece of each flavor and color. Yes, indeed. The jam and juices must be delicious. Look at this marvelous collection of five glass bottles and jars with different colors each. I would like to arrange those on the top shelf, but I'm not sure yet which order to take. Maybe I choose a random one. I was wondering how many choices there are to do so. Any suggestions? The number of permutations surely depends on the total number of bottles and jars. I think the answer can be found easily. Just start with one object and think about the possibilities to add the second one, and so on. Well combined, Captain. What really intrigues me is the question of possible arrangements when having bottles and jars of the same color. Let's add these two brown bottles and the red jar. How many arrangements are now possible? Good question, Captain. For just two brands, I have found a way of counting the combinations using this triangle scheme. But for these multiple colors, I don't know. There must be an elegant formula. Fascinating. Let me have a deeper thought, Pascal. I'll return to you later. Meanwhile, Bernoulli is trying to prepare delicious fruit scones in the galley, producing more chaos than order. He has just opened a loaded clay pot full of dried fruits and is trying to collect the desired amount of ingredients for his recipe, purple plums and orange apricots. Ah, Ernesto, why did they mix these fruits into a clay pot where I can hardly look inside? Now I have to fumble out five orange apricots and three purple plums from this random mix. I wonder what chance I have of making it on the first try. Ah, the odds are written on the outside. One, two, two for apricots, two plums. Yes, yes, yes. You are right. I could have used that. Ah, Ernesto. Only two possible outcomes. This is my kind of a gambling. Well, let's do it professionally and not alter the experiment. I will put the drawn fruit back into the pot, so the chances for apricots and plums remain constant. You should also consider the different ways in which you can obtain your desired amount of apricots and plums. Well, I watched Pascal deducing the number of possibilities with some sort of triangle. Yeah, that triangle she came up with is mind-blowing. I should ask her how to sort things out. But let's see if I'm lucky today and get the right amount of ingredients on my first try. Oh no! After a dozen trials with several failures, Bernoulli is joined by Captain Bass in the galley. Bernoulli, it's fantastic how you analyze this problem of drawing your ingredients randomly. But don't you think you should change your strategy and not replace the fruits? Well, Capitan, I guess you're right. Replacing the fruits is not the way I would usually draw. But isn't the normal method much more tricky? The odds in the pot would change after each draw. I wonder if the probability of getting the proper ingredients increases. You need to know the total amount of fruits inside the pot. You clever minds. You are both right with your observations. Bernoulli, you will check the total number of apricots and plums, while I will talk to Laplace. He is working on a different task, but maybe these two problems are related. Besides valuable glass jars and delicious fruits, the crew won a pouch full of copper, silver and gold coins at the Tree Nautic tournament. The quartermaster Laplace, keeper of the crew's finances, was used to a labeled box system to store the coins. 
The boxes for silver and copper coins were made in such a way that they could hold an unlimited number of coins, whereas the boxes for gold, resembling the captain's coin collection, could hold only a single gold coin each. The coins themselves were perfectly indistinguishable, except for the silver coins that showed an embossed serial number to prevent fraud. While Laplace is pondering the problem of copper coin distribution, Base enters the captain's cabin. Hello, my dear fellow, keeper of coins. Could you finish distributing the coins randomly into the boxes? Well, it's tough. I wanted to figure out all the possibilities of distributing these 10 copper coins into those four designated boxes. And I had a remarkable intuition. Just think about aligning all coins in a line, then you only need to add three boundaries to split the coins into four boxes. Your acumen will make you famous, Laplace. How brilliantly you rephrase the problem. It has similarities with Pascal's discoveries about sorting two kinds of colors using that triangle. How about the silver coins? Ooh, the silver coins have serial numbers. No two of them are identical. So I guess we have to think about more flavors than two. You're right. The possibilities increase a lot. Pascal was just working on that problem. And what about the four golden coins we won? What's the probability of randomly having the four corners of the 3 times 3 coin casket filled? Well, maybe one may ask the question, which compartments are occupied and which are empty, since the gold coins only allow these two states. What a clever comment! Well, let's discuss this with the others over a cup of tea. Can you help Captain Bass and True Crew to give numbers to the problems raised? How many ways are there to sort the five different glass bottles in a row? How to deal with jars of the same color when evaluating the number of ways to order them? What are the odds of getting five apricots and three plums out of a clay pot with 10 apricots and 20 plums inside with and without replacement? How many ways are there to distribute 10 copper coins into four boxes? Watch the next video to gain more insight into the art of counting and have an outlook to electron distributions.